And a lot of people think, hey, I can follow Jesus, I can have this relationship, but I really don't like church. I go there, it might have an old smell of an old building, I might have just a lot of old people, it might not be friendly, it might not have music you like, the coffee might be terrible, whatever it is, you might think it's superficial, a waste of your time. There's so many criticisms of the church. So can I be a Christian? Can I follow Jesus and not go to church? No. Hey, welcome to this week's edition of Ask the Pastor. We do this every single week where we take our Sunday sermon message and go a little bit more in depth, answer questions you have about our text or ask how can we apply this to our personal lives. This past week, we looked at Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, there's this big shift in how the author writes where he's been really talking about theology and knowledge of who Jesus is. We've said this theme that Jesus is superior to any person, place, or thing. But in the second half of chapter 10, he makes this shift to talking about really how do we apply that. And how we tackled it this week is looking at the consequences of following Jesus. The consequences of being a Christian means that our lives have to change. And one of the big key verses that is very popular that usually people might just quote alone, but really in context of the passage, it becomes even more powerful. But in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, is that we do not neglect to meet together. And he's talking to Christians. He's talking about them getting together and meeting what we still do today called the church. Now that raises an important question because I hear it all the time, and, and it's this basic question, if you'd sum it up this way, is do I have to attend church to be a Christian? There's a famous quote, maybe Gandhi or someone said it, that I like your Jesus, but I don't like your Christians or his followers. That a lot of people think, hey, I can follow Jesus, I can have this relationship, but I really don't like church. I go there, it might have an old smell of an old building, I might have just a lot of old people, it might not be friendly, it might not have music you like, the coffee might be terrible, whatever it is, you might think it's superficial, a waste of your time. There's so many criticisms of the church. So can I be a Christian? Can I follow Jesus and not go to church? No. We've said that we say this at Cross Church all the time. It's saying that we have that a Christian without a church is a contradiction. Christianity was birthed in the New Testament. After Jesus died, he rose again. He told his apostles, his disciples that had been following him, he said, Go and tell everyone about me. We say this at our churches, our mission is making Jesus known. That's exactly what they did, is they told people about Jesus. And as they told people about Jesus, they created and formed these churches. Now, here's what's so important, and I've been actually reading through one of these, this book recently. Dean Ensnera is a pastor. He wrote this book, is What is Church? And what is it all about? And goes through some different chapters of covering some basics there. But one of the things he talks about in this book, and that a lot of it's, if you've been in church, you've heard before. But just think for the New Testament, for example. As the New Testament, the whole thing was written to churches that were real churches. It wasn't just written to random Christians. It wasn't written to just the whole world at large. None of the letters or the gospels address every single person on earth read this. No, Paul, talk about the letters, for example, which is a majority of the New Testament. Paul would say in Philippians, to the church at Philippi. In First and Second Corinthians, to the church at Corinth and Ephesus. We see this all over in Colossae for Colossians, that it was written to individual churches where real people met together, where real pastors led those churches, and where real people had life together. And throughout the New Testament, we don't see Christians without a church. And you may say, why don't you go back later and go back in our faith heritage? If you go to the Old Testament, you see the same thing, that before Christianity and Jesus fulfilled being the Savior, that you see the Jewish religion. And what did they do? They went to the synagogue. They went to the temple, they met together, they performed the sacraments, they were together and had this community that was united by their God. And for us in 2024, as Christians, we cannot operate without a church family. 
which kind of raises the question, why? And maybe more is, so what makes church different? Like, why can't I just do it alone at my house? Why can't I invite one friend over and then we can be the church and we can just do it on our own and we can walk this together? Like, what parts of the church are really needed in order for it to be church? And let me ask it this way, of what parts of church are required? Now, you could make this a huge list. I'll, I'll give you four big categories that I think you could pretty much pigeonhole everything into. And you could say this different ways, but I, I think this will be just useful for us to walk through a little bit. It is first part, the first thing I'd say, one of these parts that's required at church is worship. The reason we gather together every week is we worship. We sing songs, we pray together, and then we read and are taught from God's word. In all those forms, that's why I, I never like when he says, hey, let's stand and let's just worship there. Like the seeing songs is not just the worship. The whole service is worship. When we're reading God's word, when we're preaching, when we're praying in response to that, when we're taking communion, all of those things are part of worship. And it's special and it's meaningful when you gather with a church family to do that worship. So one of the required parts of church, and you can't, and you can worship all day long, yes, but it's special when you do it with a church family and when you're doing it with other people. So in order to have a church, what's required is there needs to be worship. There also needs to be community. And this kind of sounds like pretty logical and makes sense, maybe we take for granted, but there needs to be community in church. And, and here's how community fleshes out. Usually if you go to church, you'll have small groups, maybe there's Sunday school, but the purpose of that, it's a method to get people together to do things, two things together, is to grow in relationships with one another and to grow in depth and knowledge of the Bible. And when you do those things, when you have community with one another, you see that growth that you can't replace in anywhere else. Third thing I would say is giving. And this is the one people really probably hate. Is like, that's why the people want me to go to church. And you may think, that's why you want me to go to church. You're a pastor. You just want me to give to your church. Hey, you don't even know how much our church gets. Uh, we operate on a shoestring budget. And we do that for a reason, because we just want to give as much to our community. But here's why giving is important. Here's why I give as a member of my church, not as a pastor. I've been giving for years before I became this. Is I am giving back to God what is his. And, and the, the funny thing is we give a portion we give a small sliver of what God gives us. But that sacrifice, when I give to the church, it should hurt a little bit. It should stretch me. And here's what it does. When it stretches me, when it hurts a little bit, I can take that money. I could spend it on myself more. I could go out to eat more. I could buy that thing that I'd buy that technology gadget I don't want. I could buy a new pickleball paddle that I really need for an upcoming tournament. But instead, when I have less of that money that I'm giving to God, I am depending more on him. And that is part of that de development aspect too, is I'm giving my resources back to God that he gives to me and I'm depending more on him. So worship, community, giving, and last one is serving. I said this to our church recently, that church is where we get to love one another. We get to serve one another. But I think it's also like a training ground. Think of this and, and maybe the ways we probably serve can change over time and, and cultures. In the American church, usually serving is typically in our worship and AV and our kids' ministries and greeting and whatever other kind of special ministries are out there. And that can look different depending on your context, your country, your time and history. But the idea is you're serving is meaning you're giving back to your community and to one another. And here's the thing, is if you can't lovingly and joyfully serve kids in your church, then what chance do you think you're going to have at loving your neighbors or loving your coworkers or loving your boss or your family, people who are far from God? If you can't be loving and joyful and serve other people that are like-minded like you inside the church, you're not going to do it with those who are opposed to you. So that, that's what's required of church. Four quick things, worship, community, giving, serving. And you can say those in different words, but really church falls into those big buckets. Now here comes maybe the hard part of this. So maybe you hear this, maybe this is somewhat convincing to you. Maybe it's convicting to you that you need to find a church. You need to get involved in a church. Maybe you've been exploring, like what does this Jesus look like? Maybe I wanna to learn to ha have, no, I wanna learn more about him. I need a church to grow in him, to experience what we just talked about. How do you find that church? 
how do I find a church? And what's hard is in some ways in America, we have maybe too many churches in some ways, and, and we need more and so many, but all, at the same time, sometimes we need less, but it can be confusing of what church do I go to? How do I find it? And let me just give you three things that I would encourage you to do of how do you find a church. Is first, I would say, look local. Look right around your community. Drive around, Google it. You can see online. Everyone who goes to a church now, they've usually watched online. They've seen a video, a sermon, whatever that is. But I would say, look somewhere local around you. Using one Sunday, an hour of your day to see and find a church that could be a community and could change your life isn't that big of an investment. You can invest in it. And here's what the rule I always say is if, and this can depend on your situation and where you're located, but if you have to drive more than 30 minutes to find your church and you are passing other churches that are meeting some of the requirements we're going to talk about in just a second on the way to get to that church, then you need to not. And you need to find somewhere close, local, because the purpose of that is that you'll find people that you can form community with and you can do life with. So find somewhere local close to you. And the second thing, I know this may sound basic and superficial some ways, or people might think that's overly simplistic, I would say, is find a church that preaches the Bible. If you go to a church and they're not opening the Bible, they're not reading from scripture, they're not using that as their lens to then illuminate everything else, then don't go to that church. There are a lot of great churches out there, and I'm sure there's a church within your area that you can find that preaches God's word. And here's the thing. If you make that central, maybe there's going to be some other things that you don't like. Maybe the coffee's not great. Maybe the resources aren't awesome. Maybe the facility's a little bit lacking. Maybe the music style isn't what you prefer. But if it preaches God's word, those are some hurdles you can get around, I promise. Because so often people look for churches that they like, rather than churches that will actually help them get closer to Jesus. Which leads to our third thing, and this is more of a push and a just to shove on you, is wherever you go, if you find that local church that preaches the Bible, is just dive in. Check your ego at the door. Check your preconceptions at the door. Stop judging whether the people are friendly enough, whether they're like you enough. If they live in your community, if they're preaching the word of Christ, if you are actually bought into getting to know someone, to talk to them, to grow in relationship with them, I promise you, God will find some common ground where you can make relationships, where it can be a place that consistently you can worship, you can find community, you can give back, and you can serve just as God intended the church to do. And you see, when we do that, we follow exactly what Hebrews 25, 10, 25 tells us, that we don't neglect to gather together, but we encourage one another as we see the day of the Lord approach. Hey, thank you guys for joining us today. We'll see you next time.